You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Intelligence After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Intelligence After Show. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to AfterBuzz TV Intelligence, episode number four. Oh. We're going to learn about the secrets of the Secret Service. I am your host, Ryan Hooks. Joining me on the panel today, Mr. Lem Gonzalez. What up, what up? How's everybody doing? The Dude, Bearded Brothers in the house. Today, the Bearded Brothers are in the house. <laughs> Forget the Smash Brothers, we've got the Bearded Brothers. Right. Coming at you live and direct here in Hollywood, California. So, I want to know right off the bat, what did you think about this week? Ah, what did I think about this week? I um, have some mixed feelings about this week. Mixed I thought feelings. I had I thought that the episode uh, was kind of a traditional type episode, yeah. like something happens, let's go save this person. There's a twist, right. so it was kind of like run of the mill. It was easy to digest. The yep. other episodes seemed to be more complicated, had more characters involved. But at the same token, I kind of liked the fact that it was trying to set itself apart. But now I feel like it just borrowed a script it from blended in somewhere else and said, "Oh, we ran out of time. To the writers, let's give this script." <laughs> <laughs> and let's shoot it and whatever. And to me, it sort of felt like a video game. Like you were going through a level mm -hmm. and then you hit a challenge and you beat the challenge exactly. and then you went to the next level. Exactly. And you beat the challenge. You know, it's just like a progressive moment where it's just like this happened, we solved it. Yes. This happened, yes. we solved it. Yes. Let's just see this new, you know, and there was, it was very predictable. A very predictable progression. Very predictable. Um, you know, what did you think about the. Uh, CIA agents that were undercover as uh, Syrian, you know, they were journalists. I felt like their costumes looked like they were like a high school play. <laughs> like, I didn't believe that they were uh, journalists from the moon when I saw them. I, I mean, you could tell that they weren't. There is something. Um, it was just something about them and the way they were acting. You know, they were kind of acting, you know, they were getting beat up or whatever. And so yeah. they were acting hurt. But at the same time, you're like, journalists would be more panicky. Oh, yeah. They'd you know what out. I'm saying? They, they, or they would have said something. And they're just like really calm, like they've been trained on how to do this. His so, fingers were yeah. all smashed and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's like, come on now. Come on. I mean, what that's so, so one thing that I noticed in the episode, uh, so it's only episode four, in episode two and episode three, and pretty much part of episode one, we've had mention of different characters who have just disappeared. Right. Uh, there was no mention of Amelia at all this at all. week. There was no mention of Mei Chin at all this week. So what, where did they go? I mean, Amelia is supposedly dead, which fine, we'll believe that she's dead for a while mm -hmm. until we for sure confirm that she's dead. Right. But Mei Chin... All they did in the last episode was they deleted the program that had the information that she downloaded. They didn't delete her. Right. So she, she's not dead. She's not missing. She just didn't show up. She's, I mean, she's still around. She's right. obviously still around. I think they're one of trying to save her because, again, uh, and that's maybe why they did this episode. You know, they could leave yeah. her out, yeah. kind of put some else thing, kind of distract us as an audience, yep. and then, like, bring her back. As soon as you're like, I don't know about the, oh, Machin is back. Pulling, and, pulling rabbits over here yeah, while they're doing stuff exactly, over here. Exactly, so. exactly. And then you're like, oh, I got to see what happened to me. Oh, you know, forget, yeah. it's kind of yeah. like the, you know, bait and switch yeah, kind of situation. Shout out to uh, Faye Kingsley as well, giving us some love on Twitter this week. So yeah, word, thanks to her for, Thank you. for backing us up. And we'll hope to see you back as Machin because we loved you. You were awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so we lost one of our cool female characters for now. But we still have two awesome female characters still kicking butt, yes. still taking names. Yes. Uh, Riley Neal this week, ladies and gentlemen. What did you think of her? I like Riley. Ah, dude, who doesn't like Riley? I like Riley. She's so, like, she's so, she's got it together. I love that, again, and we've said this before, but I, I do like that the show has made the female counterpart the protector, yeah, you know, as absolutely. opposed to the opposite. They even call her that in this exactly. episode. They call exactly. her the protector. Like, they make it known. So, yeah. and then I even like, like, you know, she has a little bit, you know, of a past, mm -hmm. you know, and you saw with uh, uh, Agent Griffin, yeah, which we'll, I'm Panama. sure we'll get into. Yeah. We'll get into Panama. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of that whole situation. So there's, there's 
there's a little backstory with her. They haven't really given us too much. I think there's some skeletons in her closet, and we'll probably, again, they're probably waiting to, you know, bring it out later or whatever. But at the same time, I think she's awesome. I, I love I that like you it. just said there wasn't enough, because my next question was going to be was, was there enough in this episode <laughs> that made you continue to buy into the show so far? Uh, I think it gave us... It, <sighs> I'm going to say no. because I, I, I'm just going to say no. I'm not even going to try to dance around it. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Just because I was just really disappointed on how they put this episode out. I felt like maybe they could have reversed it and mm -hmm. maybe given us that at number three or something like that right. or pushed it way back to number eight. But to give it to us now, it's like after they're trying to build this momentum and then you're going to give us this? Like, think, what does that mean? I think right now this is a good episode like 10 because – not a lot happened in terms of a plot development standpoint, mm -hmm. in terms of our characters, which is what we still need. We, we are lacking in background on anyone. Right. So we don't know why people are doing what they're doing, other than we learned Vaughn at the very end of this, the reason he's doing this is mm -hmm. for love. Love of country, right. but first off, love of Amelia. Right. Which is, she's gone now. So... I, again, I don't think that they gave me enough this week. It was a cool episode, and if I knew all these characters, and I already knew all the stuff about their mm -hmm, life, and mm -hmm. I was like just invested in the show after watching 100 episodes, 200 episodes, 300 episodes, right? cool. This would have been a great episode just to go along. It had a good flow. It was mm -hmm. fun. There was action. There was adventure. Uh, you know, We learned that Riley Neal knows uh, Arabic, or Syrian, rather. Right, right, right. Because they end up Syria. So, right. so I, I like that, and I like this episode, but... I, I don't think it's enough yet in this season. The only thing that they did do as far as character development wise was, and I can't remember his name, but the CIA director. Um, yes. That's yes, the uh, only Jeff. thing that I think they gave us more about him and with his involvement with the CIA and kind of their dynamic. Yes, Lance you know, Yeah, exactly. So. so I think that's the only thing I learned something new. You know, if we want to say that, which, you know, he wasn't, you know, a principal character to begin with. So yes. unless they're trying to work him in better. I, I, I think so. I you think know? right now you're seeing at the very end of this episode, Lillian Strand look pissed because everyone's ganging up on the new kid on the block and they're all playing favorites and the president's involved. Checks and balances is what he said. Right. Right. You know, very much, very much in his gladiator voice. Right. You know, as Tomas did. Uh, checks and balances. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot. I was going to say something too. But I totally forgot. I was going to go with this. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I will say that the president, and I think we can, we can maybe go there at this point because I think it's it's getting to that. But the president, I liked how they put the president together. I did too. He was he was he was a man. Yep. He wasn't afraid. Nope. He was they, when they walked in that room. He's like, tell me what's going on. He wanted to know exactly. And when he told him, he's like, I can handle it. Like he was very direct. A lot of times in these situations um, with these type of either films or TV shows where you have some superhero type character, mm -hmm. the president's usually like a weak uh, individual, no, very do, feeble. Do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tell and they have to, to depend do. on, and then the, the superhero person or whatever yeah, saves, the saves the day. Exactly. But he was like, I'm saving my own day. Yeah. You know, you no help war. me, I appreciate your help, and we're going to take this together. Well, well, we learned that in this episode, the president is the reason that Vaughn has this microchip in his brain. Yes. He was the one that signed off on Clockwork as a green light project and said, you know what, do this, I have faith in you guys, mm -hmm. go. But I think also in this episode, we learned that the president maybe thought a little bit about his decision now that he realizes how powerful Vaughn is because they're instituting these checks and balances where potentially Lillian's going to get shut down in some way and maybe, you know. And that did come up at the end of Absolutely. the episode. And, and I remember what I was going to say. Speaking of character development, I loved <laughs> Nelson in this episode. PJ Bryan coming in big. Ah. Uh, couple, he had a couple good jokes. The one where he's mm -hmm. like, I'm your father. <laughs> and then his dad's like, technically, I'm his father. But, right. you know, talking about the president again, and that's what maybe remember. Mm -hmm. And then also there was a great moment when uh, Vaughn breaks the neck of the security guard and he's like, oh no, I forgot to disable the alarm. And he's like, what do you think we're running here? Kids camp? Right. You know, right. he's like, I got this. And he drinks his coffee all smug. Like. Yeah, exactly. So I love that part of that. No, he's, he's a great character. So he's a great character. Coming in. I, I think they're going to let him have some fun. I think he's going to be like that fun, nerdy character back in the lab that just right. has jokes and saves the day sometimes mm -hmm. just enough to like appease his, his ego. Almost but, definitely. Cool. So let's, uh, let's get into the plot of this episode. Uh, so we learned this week that there are some supposedly reporters, if you will, that have been, ca journalists, have been mm -hmm. captured by the Syrian government, uh, and the government threatens to publicly execute them on national television. Uh, showing a news story, and they're going to send Vaughn and Riley in to save the day. Ron and Vi Vaughn and Riley are going to go in uh, with the Secret Service, and they're going to send the president in as uh, sort of like a decoy, if mm -hmm. you will. He's going to go have some talks with the government to try to negotiate a release. Uh, we also then see a scene where they're torturing these two people, uh, which their names are Tyner 
who's played by Tanya uh, Ramonde, mm -hmm. uh, who also is a Lost character. So yes. it was a total yes. Lost reunion here. Yes, I did recognize that. Uh, yeah, she's from Lost. And the uh, other person that they had captive was, where did I write it in my notes? Uh, Edwards was the, the guy that had no speaking lines. All he did was get beat up. Right. So, and he had messed up fingers. And he had messed up fingers. <laughs> so he had messed up fingers. So Tyner and Edwards uh, are being captive, and they're being tortured because the Syrian government thinks they're spies. They're saying, no, we're not spies. We're not spies. And as you and I have elaborated, we both didn't believe that they weren't spies right, right away. Um, probably why they're being tortured. But that's cool. So like I said, Vaughn and Riley are going to go and save the day. So they get Gorn, uh, and the, this is where we meet the president for the first time, um, President Finnegan, who I kind of hope we see again. I do too. Um, I liked him. Like I said, I like I liked that he was strong, that he had a, you know, I'm here, we don't want war. Mm -hmm. Many presidents have said the thing that they like the least that they've done is they didn't have the ability to prevent something from happening. I'm going to prevent it. This is, let's do this. Let's go. Um, so, you know, we learn he's involved with clockwork. And so they're sending him in basically. And this is where we meet a bunch of new characters. Um, we did meet in this episode as well, uh, Jameson, uh, Chris Jameson, who is a character that's going to be recurring in this episode. Uh, he was the agent that came in with Riley and Neil, yes. undercover, uh, played by Michael Ratty. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he's going to be in for the rest of the season at this point, according to IMDb. Oh, okay. I was going to say, yes. did you get some inside information? Uh, no, no, no inside. I just IMDb characters. It's just IMDb. Okay. Listen, if it's got an episode count, I know how long you're going to be on there and when gotcha. you may or may not die. Gotcha. Um, so we also meet Barbara and Thomas, who are just some unknown secret agents. And again, we meet Charlie Griffin, special agent in charge. Mm. Uh, and this is where we learn a little bit about... Uh, about Riley's past. Yes. So they have been involved in a consorting incident. And, you know, Riley's like, I told you not to read my file. He's like, I'm right. not. I'm reading his. Right. Um, okay. So let yep. me ask you this. Do you think there was a little bit of jealousy with Gabriel and Agent Griffin? I think so. Um, I, I felt like there was a, a measuring contest, if yeah. you will, when they first got in the room, because like, okay. well, we're not responsible for you, and we're right. going to do this, and there's 10% this. And, you know, and then Vaughn comes back with him that joke. Hey, if there's only 10%, we're fine. Right, exactly. You know, and I think he kind of was like, all right, fine. Yeah. He's, a, he's a keeper. But I could definitely tell that there was some tension from them right off the start. Sure. Um, how did you feel about the tension? Um, I well, I, I think he... <laughs> I feel like that was a loaded question. <laughs> right. Well, I think I think Gabriel was definitely... There was a tinge of jealousy. He's... You know, they've built this relationship. It hasn't turned anything romantic as we've seen yet. And I think, of course, that's going to take some time it's or whatever. There. It's leading there. We know where it's going um, because it's predictable. But yes. the whole thing is that I think um, definitely he has, you know, he's, he has a relationship with her as far as their working relationship. Um, again, he has feelings for her, you know, so on and so forth. So I think what's going to happen, what he, he sees this other person, he's like, well, let me read his file. Let me see what's going on. And oh, then yeah. as we see later, when they're in the car uh, and the limo and they're going um, to basically, you know, kind of take care of business with the Syrians, um, he's like, you know, what did you do? You know, tell him what you did. And she's like, well, what's going on? And then we find out later, you know, that he, you know, kind of took credit and then she didn't get a promotion as a result. So he knew all of this and he sees him and basically he looks at him and just, okay, this is somebody that I, I don't really want to trust and it's not good for you. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like Vaughn in general is sort of a, not necessarily as untrusting, but he likes to, to get information. He likes oh, yeah. the power that he has from oh, having sure. this microchip, and he likes to get in there and, like, read people's files oh, and get yeah. the dirt. You know, and he promised Riley that he wouldn't do it to her. I mean, I feel I think he still does, but he doesn't tell her about it. Oh, he I mean, does. That's Come total, on. That's total guy move. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> right. I totally did. Right, you exactly. Know? And I think he likes the power, but I think it was a protective instinct as well. Oh, where yeah. it's look, him looking into some situations and, sure. you know, this is something out of his realm because, mm -hmm. you know, he's a different type of agent than these right. agents. So I think he wanted to know more. And and also, too, I, I noticed that he didn't really give Agent Griffin really all his skills. Because um, if you noticed, um, jumping up, but in the scene where in the car when they're all three together and, um, you know, she kind of has to, um, Riley has to kind of bait and be like, well, you know, how did you know that information? Oh, well, we kind of talked about it. like yeah. she kind of throws it this off. The social media. Exactly. Thing, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's yep, it right when there. They're flooding the world with social media. Exactly. You know, they're trying to get him so not know how, you know, powerful or how basically yep. smart he is. Or you know, the type of intelligence. In, in the not too distant future of the world of intelligence, social media is prevalent in Syria, right, <laughs> and everywhere else still. Exactly. Something to look forward to in the future, I suppose, right, if you're right, Syrian. Right. Absolutely. So, um, so then they basically the presidents agreed to do all this. They're going in, they fly in, mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to figure out 
what they can do basically to get involved. So they go first go with the president to the Syrian government and they meet with the officials. We learn that the Syrians are not taking this seriously, that they are they pretty much want to start some trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, all the people that are in the room are military based, police based, dirty people and we see some of the power that Vaughn has that the president is now learning about because mm -hmm. he's doing this cyber, you know, work for him where he's reading their faces and getting their files and seeing the stuff they've done. He's telling him who they are. He also asked, the president asked him to tell him something only he knows. And he whispers in his ear and the president gives him this like approving look like, oh, right. you know my dirty stuff. All right. right. So I wonder what he told him. I don't know. What do you think he said? I, I mean, I don't think it was anything that had to do with politics. I think it was something like personal. Do you think... Uh, in the episode taping that there were shenanigans going on in his ear when he was actually whispering something oh, I'm else sure. in his ear, like something. I think so. Like this is one of those things you do, like you say something real dirty yeah. in his ear to make him laugh, like right. see if you can break his character. Right, exactly. That's something fun to do as an no, actor. I, I think I think they do that all the time. I would do that. We're doing the no pants dance. <laughs> oh snap! That's what he whispered in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Roya here at the bar, the booth, coming yeah, up with the no pants shout dance. Shout out to Roya. Yeah. yeah. All right, back to work. <laughs> I can't, I, I got to dance. Okay, um, so anyway, so we uh, see them going to the prison then, after they leave the president, and the, the way they get in is they use Jameson, mm -hmm. the new agent that's with them. He's dressed up as a doctor, and they're coming in to make sure that the people that they are rescuing are medically approved to leave. Right. Um, so that Tyner and Edwards basically aren't too beat up. Mm -hmm. um, and there's kind of a joke in the car, like, well, what if they really need medical attention? Right. You know? I like that. What if they I need like a doctor? Right. They're like, yeah. uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't know think that gonna... far. Yeah, they think that far ahead. <laughs> so that's cool. They get in there, and that's what they need is the foot in the door. Um, and then he cyber renders the building, basically gets the cameras. They loop the cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, again, where Nelson has his moment where uh, the cameras are looped. He sets them to loop. You know, and he's the one at home clicking the buttons. But then the alarms should have gone off. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nah, I got it. I, I'm good. So that's where Vaughn makes his move and gets in. Um, but we find out then as he busts in that the prisoners are undercover CIA agents. Like we didn't know already. Right. Spoiler alert. A spoiler alert. But they've been sent. Uh, they're trying to find a doctor who uh, is a developer of missile guidance systems. And they don't know her name. All they know is they have a code for her, code 479, I'm sorry, 4739.IL. Mm -hmm. So she's just a serial number, if you will, in the Syrian system. So then jump back to Washington, D.C. This is, again, where you're talking about D uh, DNA, uh, DNI Jeff uh, Tadizu, mm -hmm. is that how you pronounce the last name? Um, and Lillian having a little conversation on a park bench. Apparently, if you're in the CIA or Secret Service and you want to have a classified conversation, you have it on a park bench. Right. Or in an alley or in a tunnel. That's, That's what I've learned. What That's what I've learned from decades of TV and movie watching. Right. That I should start hanging out in the park in Washington <laughs> and I will learn all the government everything. secrets. Everything. You'll learn everything. So, I mean, there's so many secrets to learn, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know what else with secrets you can do? If you want to learn secrets, you can go on iTunes. You can. Did you know that if you go on iTunes, you can learn secrets of the world? Yes. Cool. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, go on iTunes, check us out, rate us, Intelligence, CBS, After Show. Uh, you can find all of our information on there from all of our 67 shows that we cover here at After Buzz in over 100 plus countries, 25 million subscribers. 25 million. 25 million. Uh, and we do this for you guys. Uh, we enjoy doing this. We love the show. We love that you love the show. So we want to hear from you guys. Go on iTunes. Send us comments. Send us quotes. Send us information. Uh, we're going to now do stuff through uh, After Buzz's Facebook page as well. We're going to have some live chats where you can get with us before the show. Nice. Uh, so if you want to hit at us, you can tweet us. You can get us on After Buzz. Uh, and we're here for you because we want to do the show that you enjoy. And we want you to rate us. Give us five star. Check it out. And while we're off topic of something else totally related and unrelated, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, I won a contest this week. <laughs> so what that means is... In this contest, it was a Twitter-based contest for CBS Intelligence. Luckily, I tweeted intelligence like 50 times a week <laughs> and every character on the show because I like doing it and I want to hear what they have to say. So I want an uh, autographed script from an episode of Intelligence by the cast. But you know what? I don't want it. I want to give it to you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a contest with us here at After Buzz TV and you at home, the viewers. Basically, in the next three weeks, at the end of each of our episodes, I'm going to give you a word. And what's going to happen is after we give out the third word, um, I'm going to have the audience tweet at us. 
And, and that being said, you need to be following all three of us on twi Twitter, myself, Lem, and Yell, and tweet us the three words. First one to get me the tweets gets the script with the autographs of all the cast members. Awesome. Sounds like a plan? Awesome. Yes. I, uh, beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. So, I'm in. You guys should be in at home, too. So stay tuned for that here coming up towards the end of the show, and we will get you rocking and rolling with a sweet new intelligence script. And if you tweet and you send a picture of you wearing a beard, then that's like extra bonus. Yeah, if you have a beard <laughs> or if you don't have a beard, um, we actually talked about having the contest originally be pictures of people's beards. And right. I said, well, it's not fair to the women who don't have beards or to the women who do have beards. <laughs> so... All you gentlemen with grizzly beards, if send us Twitter messages with the pictures of the beards. Because um, I'm actually planning on shaving my beard here in a week or so yeah. into something fun. So I'd love some inspiration. Right. Uh, I love tagging bearded gentlemen and <laughs> hashtag beards on tw pictures of Lem and I on the internet. Word. Uh, we get lots of likes from the bearded folk. Yeah. And the women that like beards. So anyway. That's awesome. All right. So back, back to the task at hand here. Um, we've, we're finding out that these other agencies are pretty much, they don't like... Cybercom. They don't. They are. Cybercom's like the new kid. And yeah. the CIA's taking their toys and they're going home. Right. I'm done with you guys. Forget it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool. I, th I think that we're going to see more of that. Uh, not, not to get any kind of predictions too soon, but I think that there's going to be some conflict coming up with CIA Cybercom relations. Well, there has already been conflict. I mean, I, I mean, it's been, be... it's started with conflict. Like they never really were getting along. I mean, like you said, they were the new kids, Cybercom or whatever. Yeah. And I think a lot of them too feel like, oh, this like fancy stuff, this is not going to work. It's uh, all about the blood, sweat, tear. Yeah, you know what I'm school. saying? The old school. And so you got these people that believe in that, the CIA, the military, and you got these, you know, they, they don't respect them. They don't respect them. You know, I think that they're going to come down to an episode here in the future where there's going to be some conflict and Cybercom's going to come out on top. And they're just going to be like, what? Yeah. In your face. And it's going to you be know? your boy. And it's going to tell yeah, him. He's, he's just going to be like, <laughs> PJ, uh, right. you know, Nelson Cassidy's just going to be like, boom. boom. He's going to make some big face expression. Right. Um, yeah. I totally see that. I happening. see that coming for sure. I totally see that so, happening. We'll see. Uh, there's conflict developing already, and at the end of this episode, they said the checks and balances, mm -hmm. you know, and that's totally what we're seeing, that people are not trusting them because of their power and their ability. But at the same time, talking about old school, Vaughn is old school. He is military trained. He was special ops. Like, he's an ass kicker, you know, in all sense of the word, and now he's just, like, super skilled because mm -hmm. he can do everything else. Right. You know, he doesn't need the intelligence booth back at home. He can do it himself, but he likes, you know, to make them think that they're collaborating with him a little bit. He likes to give Lillian a little something here and there. Here, oh yeah, oh here you help, thank you. Right. Hey, go check into this for me. Right. Stay right. busy over here while I'm saving the world. But it's fine. So we'll see what happens. So in the next scene we see uh, the Riley's coming out as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, and she helps uh, profile the doctor because they get these photographs after they find from the prisoners um, that the reason they're there, they're looking for this doctor uh, who's a, a missile guidance technician and is helping the Syrians develop basically a missile guidance system. Uh, and Dr. Cassidy says, you know what, right now they're, they're throwing pipe bombs. But if they get this coordinate system where they can, they can start targeting towns, precise targets, and that would be a big, big problem with mm -hmm. the Syrian government having that kind of power. Um, but Riley, you know, smart as she is, says, you know what, we have a profiling system in the Secret Service that all we do is this. You know, so they start, they use cyber rendering. Second time in this episode we see cyber rendering being used, which I really like this one because he gets into the market right. and like you see all the cool details of the market. That and, was kind of dope. Yeah. I did I did appreciate that as far as like using the abilities and yeah. giving us a little bit more with what he's able to do when he goes to each individual person. Slowly. Yeah. This is the first time he's done it really slowly. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He was really fast or whatever. But I did, when I was watching it, I, I really did appreciate that. I thought that was something new I hadn't seen before. Yeah, and uh, to that degree. Shout out to the the graphics guys. Yeah, because like I have a super high end TV because I love watching TV and movies, and like a lot of times when I watch things that are graphic designed or green screen designed on my TV, it's mm -hmm. so realistic that it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. Like my my definition of my TV makes green screen it look bad. It stands out like a sore thumb. Like uh, oh, like I used to watch Once Upon a Time, and the background was just like it looked flat to me. It didn't <laughs> look 3D. It looked like somebody painted a set. Yeah. So. Great job on the graphics, because I think those do look sensational. Um, anyway, so he's in the cyber rendering, and he's profiling all these people. Um, and th basically, they know that she's a doctor, she's an American, she's a woman. So they can kind of narrow it down to the people in the picture, because they did what we call a clover field, right. if you will. Basically, taking a picture and finding the clover 
in the picture, and that's a way that they can basically not let people know that they're looking for somebody by having direct pictures of them. Mm -hmm. So they find her. Uh, we find Dr. Susan Hawkins from Dayton, Ohio, my hometown, Ohio. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah. Dayton? I'm not from Dayton. That's an hour away. But oh. cool. It's fine. We don't mind. Cool. Uh, graduate of college and all that. So she has uh, been MIA since 2005. A couple years before that, though, she married a Syrian national. So we do find that she does have some ties to the Syrian government. Right. And it's probably a big reason as to why she's maybe there or helping them out. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she's just doing it because they're holding her prisoner. Right. Hard to say. Um, so basically, after we find the market, they said, you know what? Let's go to the market. If she hangs out there, that's where these pictures are from. We could probably find her there. Mm -hmm. How smart is that? Right. Go to the place where the photo's taken. So they go to the market. And in the market, they are searching for people. They see that there's a tail. They see that she's there. What are the odds that she's shopping at the market? Right. That's okay. Again, this, this goes back to one of those things in the show that I find, and I said in the first couple episodes, I don't know if there's going to be enough challenges mm -hmm. for the, the, the protagonists of the show where they're like, oh, this is hard for us. Where right. They have to put in a lot of work. Well, I mean, speaking on that, I feel like not just, you know, Gabriel, but I think everybody mm -hmm. on there has this, like, superior intelligence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and obviously the show's intelligence, but everybody, like, can and anybody just be average? You know yeah, what I'm I saying? Mean, like, you see Dr. Cassidy and yeah. uh, Nelson Cassidy this week kicking right. butt on the computers and right. kind of things. We see Riley always kicking ass. Always. Uh, she's stronger than all the guys. Right. Uh, Lillian is just attitude chip on her shoulder all the time and is getting her way. Right. And then, you know, Vaughn's military trained. So they did have a good team to put together, but I want to see a failure. I want to see something happen that maybe doesn't go their way. Well, the only thing I can think of, and again, too early for predictions, but I think it's going to be like a sabotage. Yeah. I think the only way that that's going to happen because they're, they are, they're, they're so put together and they're so well, you know, versed in what they're doing. It does make it difficult for challenges to come up because it's like every challenge that comes up. Oh, psh, we got that. Oh, we got that. Oh, it's, oh, this has happened. Oh, let's, let's go ahead and do this. This person knows this. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not because if it was just him, then yes, that would make sense. Yeah. But he has this whole team of Einsteins, if I will, you know, yeah, if you no, will. Geniuses, go ahead. Yeah, basically, and, and, and so there's no challenges. So I, what I'm saying is I think it's going to take like a, some type of sabotage situation. I don't, maybe it's internal or something that's external. You know, we got Mei Chin still out there. And, we do. You know, that whole situation kind of infiltrating the system. Like something has to happen where the system gets shut down somehow. And then that's how. But other than that, there's no way, dude. What are we? Are we crossing revolution into this? We're having a 15 year blackout now? <laughs> Intelligence after show, ladies right. and gentlemen, we are here for you. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they're at the market. They found Dr. Hawkins, and they are scanning the market. And they tell Riley to go talk to the woman. Vaughn's going to take care of the tail. And I, I love the way that he takes care of the tail, where he. Basically scans this guy's cell phone, mm -hmm. gets his number. As soon as he, he call, jams the signal, so the phone hangs up, he starts riding his bike away, and, and then he calls him again. Right. And he's sitting there, and it's just a bunch of static and weird noise. And the guy's parked right in front of the tail's car. The tail ends up pulling a gun on him and get him out. But in that amount of time, Riley gets a chance to talk to Dr. Hawkins. And we find out that she is doing this and doesn't necessarily want to, but also that they have her daughter. And she's scared of her husband. So they offer to help. Basically, mm -hmm. so they're like, we're gonna get you out of here. We're gonna help you and They're getting her out basically, but right when all this is starting to go down This is when it's starting to get tense. So about 18 minutes left in the episode and we find that They go to help her daughter. They get her daughter out of the school at the very same time They find the body that uh, Vaughn has hidden in the closet in the Syrian uh, prison where he broke the guy's neck when he first met the CIA agents. Right. And so he's like, oh, man, we got 10 minutes to get out of here before the whole government goes crazy. So he uh, says, we got to get out of here. They get the daughter. The president gets out, and they take off. And I'm like, oh, man, there's like 15 minutes left, and everyone's safe? Right. What, what is this? Right. I thought the same thing. Oh, man, something's got to like, happen. I actually pushed pause on my DVR to see how much time, to see much time. I'm like, wait a second. This can't be it. Absolutely. So there's, there's 15 minutes left in the episode, and the president gets to the plane safely. Mm -hmm. The doctor gets to the plane safely. Her daughter gets out with no problem. Mm -hmm. they, they even try to call her husband, and they re-up their call to Vaughn. He's like, no, that's fine. She can, yes, Riley, right. Riley Neal, I trust her. Right. Take her away. That's great. Um, so they get there, and then Vaughn does an unexpected thing here, and he decides to go back for... Tyner and Edwards, and says, you know what? We can't leave them behind. I got a saying, no men left behind. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I need to borrow your car. 
and he's like, I need a bulletproof car. Right. So we know it's about to get real. Of course. Listen, I can't take the standard SUV. <laughs> I need your bulletproof limo, <laughs> sir, that you use. And so they go, and uh, they also send Griffin with them. Because the president's like, yep, that's a great idea. Go. Right. Take my car. Even though Griffin proje- you know, protests that this is the thing that's going to happen, mm-hmm. they go anyway. So, and this is what we were talking about um, earlier, where we learn a little bit more about Griffin and Riley's past. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were original write ups for consorting, if you will, which can be taken in many different ways. Consorting. Hmm. I don't know what even to call those words that I would like to use right now. <laughs> what is called it? consorting. Um, and also that we find that Griffin straight up screwed Riley. No yep. pun intended. Uh, out of a promotion. There was an issue in Panama where they were with the vice president. And him and his wife got in a fight. They went for a walk. And there was an incident on the beach between some locals where basically there was an issue. And Riley and Griffin got them out of there, saved the vice president. It was sort of an incident that didn't happen, or at least Riley was led to believe, so there was no file about it. Right. But there was a file about it, and basically Griffin said, oh, no, it was me. I saved the vice president. Took all the credit. Took all the credit and screwed Riley out of her promotion because the very first episode we learned that she's trying to get promoted Mm -hmm. to this presidential detail. Right. uh, And before she gets reassigned to Cybercom, uh, that's what she wants to do, and she doesn't want this job because she has a job. Right. So we learned the reason she didn't get promoted is Griffin. Do you think he's gone? Or do you think we're going to see him again? Um, based on how everything ended, um, I don't. I don't see why they would need him anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they kind of, you know, did what they. I, I felt like they they used him for what he was. Yeah. Uh, in the sense of you know giving kind of some history about Riley mm-hmm. uh, and that whole situation to kind of see why she has a chip on her shoulder. You know, give her some vindication. You know, now that she knows the truth situation. Yeah. And then of course you know he gets stabbed in the leg. And, and she's <laughs> a better agent than him. Oh yeah. Because of course. We, so they go off to save uh, Tyner. And they, they they figure out that she's trapped in a prison. They can't get her out. Mm-hmm. And this is where you said they, they flooded social media with words of a prison break. They set off every alarm they mm-hmm. could find. And so they knew that they would move her. So they go after them as they're moving her. And there's a shootout. Good thing they got that limo. Right. Uh, and Griffin's okay, but Riley's dropping folks. You know, she's the one that's getting people out. Vaughn goes and pulls Tyner out of the car. I didn't see Edwards, though. Did you see him? I, I don't I, remember. Is he dead? I don't remember. Because we, all, I only see in the car, in the back of the caravan, they pull out Tyner. They don't pull out Edwards. Mm-hmm. But he was in a bad shape, in a bad way, when they were in the prison. Uh, and that's the reason they were allowing a doctor to come in. Oh, no, he, he died. Did, oh, did he die? Okay. Yeah, she said uh, the other, um, you know, CIA agent said that he passed away. Okay. Yeah, so he, she did cool. say, mention that. Edwards, I'm sorry you had no lines. You got your fingers smashed. <laughs> you look died. great, though. <laughs> um, so Tyner gets out, and they're basically putting her in the limo. Uh, again, we see Riley after she shoots all these folks. She's right. driving the limo like she stole it. <laughs> Literally, that's what I wrote down. Drive it like she stole it. She's a beast. So she's like, ah, oh, I learned how to drive like this in uh, right. school. Right. No big deal. It's whatever. Right. Everyone drives like this, don't you? So I, I drive like that. It's L.A. Are you kidding me? Have you been out here and driven like that? Um, yeah. No. No, I drive like a mad fool. Right. I got the turbo engine in my car for people a reason. Are, people are, well, in traffic, you can't do anything. Oh, that's true. That's why well, I mean, that's what I'm I mean, it's yeah. way tough. Right. All right. Anyway, so um, again, second time in this episode, they get back to the limo and everyone's safe. Mm-hmm. They made it. Hurrah. Yay. Hooray. Everyone made it. Oh, wait. Snap. Uh, after they get back to the limo, I don't understand why Lillian always does this. Lillian is like looking for information at the end of an episode every single week. Like it's <laughs> it's done. Everyone's everyone's safe. She did a couple weeks ago when she right. was looking at information and she right. goes and talks to that little kid. Right. Like right. last week. Yeah. And uh, that's her job. Yeah. She's, she's an she's, extra information looker upper. She sweeps up all the dirt, dirty loose ends. There it is. That's it. She's a sweeper. I guess. That's her title. We're gonna give her a title. She's, she's a sweeper. sweeper. She's a sweeper. All right, Mark, you're the sweeper. Done. Uh, and she finds out that the passport uh, for Dr. Hawkins has been revoked for years. Mm-hmm. And she's not even a U.S. citizen anymore. So why does the CIA, who claimed to have no information about her mm-hmm. or even know who she was, why would they have revoked her passport? Right. What did you, right when that happened in this episode, what did you think was going to happen? Oh, I mean, again, uh, I'm, I'm labeling this you know episode predictable. Like I'm just that's the name predictability whatever yeah. you want to call it. But um I knew that you know the the uh, agent that was on the plane I knew that she was going to you know basically snuff her or try to at least. Um because once I found out you know she said oh the passport's revoked. Oh okay. Well they were going to kill her. 
Bottom line. I mean, I knew exactly. I mean, it wasn't any surprise, was anything. And then when they shot back to her on the plane, she gets up. She's got the knife in her back. You know, I mean, I knew everything that was going to happen. There was no. Did you? So when I was watching this episode, I actually was thinking that more was going to happen with Griffin. I was really? I was expecting maybe something dirty with him. Like I was like, oh, you know what? Like maybe he's involved, or you know, that's why he's not wanting to do this. And we didn't really see any resolution between him and Riley, you know, other than the justification of he gets stabbed he in the leg. Stabbed in the leg. He gets I stabbed liked. in the That was great. I yeah, love that he got stabbed in the leg. But I didn't see any like there was no closure about that. There was nothing that. You know, so I, I thought that maybe there was some him going to be a little dirty. Well, I, I I will say that earlier I thought maybe that like when yeah, he when came he on board when he first met him and the whole thing when he's scanning him you know or whatever and trying to find out oh I'm scanning him I thought that there was going to be something there, but it turned out that it wasn't. So and once I found out that instead of them being actual prisoners they were CIA I was like oh something's going to happen with that. Oh yeah for sure. Bottom line. So anyway so uh, our agent Tyner. It's a wet op, and apparently is going to kill the doctor regardless mm-hmm. of the fact that she's been liberated or not. Uh, but like I said, Riley saves the day yet again right. this week. Riley, God, Megan, Riley, please, please come in here and yes. hang out with us. Yes, we got a couch for you. We, yes, I'm stop right there. Um, and so Riley saves the day. Griffin gets stabbed in the leg. It's basically redemption justification for him being a douche. Um, and Vaughn tells him to suck it up. It's not that bad. As he's sitting there, like holding his leg, like oh my leg. Right. So, so he he he's gets like, he th- I love that. He's like, here, take this. Yeah, he throws, throws a little, a little cloth. Yeah, a little to cloth. Basically tie it off. Yeah. Pull it flesh out. wound. So no, it's cool. But we see a cool little ending scene here uh, with the president. And the president says, you know what? You did a good job. Uh, let's play golf sometime. Do you play mm-hmm. golf? Does that microchip help your golf game? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, if there's a microchip that helped your golf game, I would own it. Because right now my golf game is terrible. How's your golf game? Uh, I don't even play golf. So your golf game is worse than mine. Right. Cool, let's play some time. Right. Uh, anyway, basically, get this, the president's stamp of approval for a job well done. He asks him, and we see a cool little moment here, You know why he's doing this. Why did he agree to go into this program? Mm-hmm. This is our only back moment with uh, Vaughn. And he said that he does it for love. And, of course... The media thought his love of country, but mm-hmm. Riley's like, no, no, he did it for real love, mm-hmm. female, male love, mm-hmm. you know, some kind of relationship love, whatever you want to call it. And he is doing the country thing second. But that, I, I think that gives us a little insight as to what happens at the end of the episode, because the president trusts him, agrees with him, th- right. did a great job. But we see that the DNI guys are putting the lockdown mm-hmm. on the, the cybercom folk. And Lillian's getting sat down. Basically, they're bringing in Jeff. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They are being restricted because the fact that Vaughn did the right thing. He went out of his way to save Tyner, even though she went against protocol and tried right. to kill the doctor. Right. You know, and they basically think they can't control him. Well, and, and that's what leads what you just said alludes to, you know, the end of the episode when they say that, you know, they're going to shut it down and. And how that's going to work out. But my thing is, what do you think is really going to happen? I, I, you know what? I'm going to save that here for about three more minutes. Okay. Because um, that basically concludes a big chunk of this episode. So right now, before we get into our After Buzz TV predictions, I would like to give you the word of the week for our CBS Intelligence Autograph oh, Script Contest. Oh, yeah. In the fashion and in the love of Megan Ori this week, um, at Riley Neal, this week's word is going to be Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood is the word of the week, folks, for this week's contest. Tune in the next two weeks for a few more words and hopefully win that CBS autographed intelligence script. Yeah. For sure. So yeah. uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter as well to be involved and to enter into that. Uh, all right, cool. So I want to go right now into our AfterBuzz TV predictions. Yeah. And now, your AfterBuzz <laughs> TV. Predictions. All right, I'm going to go first because I was just saying I'm leading right into that. I think that coming up within the next few weeks, we are going to see a fair amount of tension between uh, the folks in the CIA and the folks in uh, the cybercom. And I think that, that being said, that this is where we're going to see our issue, where something's going to happen where the CIA is going to try to lock them down. And this is going to be potentially something that's going to cause some trouble with Vaughn and Riley, mm-hmm. and it's going to cause some trouble with Lillian and, and, and their whole group. They're going to maybe lock them out of filing. They're going to do something where they're going to mm-hmm. hinder a mission. 
I think it's going to be a serious mission because, again, they said checks and balances like several times, and this is them checking and balancing the power that Vaughn has, the power that Cybercom has, mm -hmm. and their abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to see more with Riley and Vaughn. <laughs> Thank you, that is all. Lem, what do you think? Uh, so I believe... Um Again, because this this episode I feel was so predictable, the way it ended, I feel like, you know, Gabriel is, is he's going to go rogue at some point in eventually, time. Yeah. I, eventually. I think they were kind of setting that up, you know what I'm saying? And I think the reason why is what you said earlier about, you know, the situation with him being doing this for love. Yeah. You know, I think, um, yeah, he loves his country. Yeah, he's, you know, he's he's old school, as we talked about before, because of what he's done in the past. Um, now he's just kind of spruced up, you know, not a little yep. bit, but a lot. A lot. Um, but I think that because of that situation, I think that he, there's going to, I don't know what exactly will happen, but there's something that's going to make him, whether it's, you know, because, again, his, his, his girl has been absent. You know, they haven't shown her, really talked about her at all. Yep. They didn't do anything at all this episode. So I think that's going to come back at some point. And he's going to get some kind of information or something, and then he's going to go out after her. All right. Well, that wraps it up here. Thank you guys for tuning in. We've got predictions. We've got contests. We've got action. We've got adventure. And we've got mistrust in the government. And we have beards. And we've got beards. Don't forget <laughs> that. Uh, let them tell me where they can find you. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram at the Poet Saint all day, every day. All day, every day. And as always, you can find me at RyanHooks92 on Instagram, Twitter, Yahoo, and Facebook. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next week here at the Intelligence After Buzz TV show. Yeah. yeah. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.